welcome to Trending brought to you by Airtel. My name is Kim Opera, and of course, this is your one stop show for everything nice and everything trending. That's right, trying to bring you everything and everyone that is trending. My name is Pascal, and of course, we're going to short break right now. When we return, the show, show continues. continues. Welcome back. You're still watching Trending brought to you by Airtel. Exactly. And of course, you know we always bring the best and the best on the show. Mm -hmm. And today we have Woo! superstar actress. Number one. The Black Beauty. Number two. Herself. Mm -hmm. And she goes by the name... Rum. <laughs> Beverly Osu. In the beauty. Yes, 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 no, no, it's, it's fine. It's oh, fine. you look beautiful as ever. <laughs> thank you, Kimi. You oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Kim, are you going to leave me alone? Leave me alone. I will not. Leave me alone. I leave me alone. Like <laughs> shift, to shift your chair away from them. <laughs> but do you want me to move my chair away or I should stay? Remember, I can sing. <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. You want me to leave? Or no, I don't. I want you to stay. I want you to stay. I'm so nice. I'll do whatever Beverly sings. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Fantastic. How mm. have you been, Beverly? Um, How is this economy treating you? Oof. I'm a child of God mm. and rise above the economy. Amen. Yes, when yes. there's a casting down, there's a lifting up. Somebody mm. say hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's, it. Yes. That's the answer to that. <laughs> wow. Honestly, like, you're somebody I would say you're definitely like God's child because your journey in this entertainment industry has, oh. has been, I'll say, Amazing. a miracle. Yeah. We all know how. You know, you metamorphed from Big Brother Africa mm -hmm. and then going into acting and just staying steadfast in that. You know, most people, like when they act, they're still content creators, they're still this, they're still that. <laughs> but like, Beverly's like, I just want to act. Yeah, I just want to act. I just want to act. <laughs> just wanna and that was this. How was that, you know, transformation for you? The outside people see the work. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, I just like to be my authentic self and I know that nothing good comes easy but so far so good if I wasn't acting I was still gonna be on your TV screens mm -hmm. one way or the other mm -hmm. so um, I mean the journey so far mm -hmm. has been gracious not easy but gracious yeah yeah gracious. yeah I like that but but still there's a particular question I've always wanted to ask superstars and people that are in the industry because sometimes I feel it myself do you feel like um, people that are really close to you appreciate your work more than people that are not close to you. The tribe that I'm in, right, I think we're so different, so we speak the truth to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the yes is mostly from us, our approval, than the outside world. Like, I don't strive for outside validation. And I'm I, my greatest critic, so I, before I say my work is good, trust me. Maybe 10,000 people have been shouting, your work is so good, they have to tell me in my head. So far, so good. The tribe I'm in, we tell ourselves the truth, mm -hmm. we are authentic, we... There's no fake zone where I'm at, so um, so far, so good, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Like that. Okay, that's, that's really interesting to know. So in this... Um, everyone always has this conversation, right? Like, yeah. it's always very hard to, like, move from the reality space into the entertainment space and still be like strong yeah, and then yeah. you've gotten to a point or you're you're still going and you're still going you're still going but like you've gotten to a point that you've um, immersed some sort of recognition in the industry mm -hmm. yes so would you say at any point you had imposter syndrome huh i still have imposter syndrome actually because so many things i do i'm like oh yeah it's like an out of body experience mm -hmm. but i know that i have to just put on that cap of the girl on tv and then come out and do what i have to do but i still have imposter syndrome because i always feel like i've not arrived there's just there's always this journey or there's always this target mm -hmm. the average mind says oh babe you're doing so great but me i'm like ah, what next what next what next mm -hmm. so i'm still dealing with my imposter syndrome mm -hmm. i know that reality stars have a hard time. A very hard time. A very, because Nigerians don't take reality shows seriously. seriously. And I also understand that what is raining now is that you have to be toxic. 
to be mm. in a reality show. It doesn't work like that because once you come into the real world, <laughs> it is so you mad. You go jam mad fast. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so far, so good. I, if you go for a reality show, take out the best. I personally, two weeks after I came out from Big Brother Africa, I removed Big Brother Africa for my bio mm -hmm. because of um, the bashing I got. So I just thought, oh, no, I don't. Big Brother Africa, nobody should know me from that. Too. Let me just mm -hmm. work on myself and do other things, you know. But it's hard, but it's worth it. And if you have something in your soul to do, like you really want to do this, you will do it. Yeah. There are no gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody tell you, to oh, I'm here. the one that can put yeah. you here or everybody's lucky now or blessed that we're in the social media era era so everybody has their own compound and everybody's a landlord so mm -hmm. that's you know, true it's you that will project how you want your art to be perceived and so far so good just keep doing you yeah, yeah. okay so would you mind sharing how you actually deal with your imposter syndrome? Ah, because like a lot of people it? actually are going through that or go through that or will go through that. So just, you know. I mean, I have people <laughs> in my life. I don't want Pascal to be jealous. If I say Kim now, you'll be jealous. <laughs> you are very correct. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a good number of people. And like, if you watch my Insta stories, I'm very grateful mm -hmm. for the family I'm in. Or the family I came into this world with, mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the family that I made along the line mm -hmm. because they put me grounded, they keep me grounded, they put me on check, they remind me who I am every day, if it's by text or by insult or, <laughs> or you know, they remind me every day who I am. There are days I wake up and I just, I feel like crap mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and I feel like I've not done enough. And I feel like I've not even started, but I have people that bring my CV to my face and say, look at this. Look in, at you. Look at this. In this, yes. thing, this mm -hmm. thing, you were doing this. So, um, I mean, the steady reminders, are, I think that's what keeps me. For the first time, 2024, mm -hmm. my mother finally said she's proud of me. Oh. <laughs> that's the question I was actually asking the other time. Wow. Yes. Yeah. My mother said she's proud of me and she says that, I'm a being of hope to her. Oh, and if you know on. the history between me and my mom, I stressed her. Yeah. So, <laughs> so far so good. I'm grateful for family. I think they keep me on check. So. Mm. I hope you didn't cry when she told you that. Though. Not really. Yeah. She didn't see me cry, but I shed, I, yeah. I, I shed drops. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you have like a mental health... Um, yeah, an advocate. Yes, advocate. Mm. Yes. Yes, and of course, men. I want to know, how did you start that? And what was the reason why you even started that in the first place? We as Africans, because of how strong we try to make people believe that we are, mm -hmm. right? We'd rather be miserable than vulnerable. True. And I'm a very strong person, but also I'm a soft person. Like, I go through my stage of empathy and wokeness in the sense that, oh, this person just fell down. Natural Beverly is sad, mm -hmm. but Natural Beverly will say, okay, this person that fell down, what's this person doing it for? Mm. You know, it's a daily tussle. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired of being strong. <laughs> like, I'm tired of being seen as strong, seen as, oh, you're such a strong, great woman. No, I just want to be soft and vulnerable. How about that? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to be the one fighting the greatest battles. I don't want to be the one that is unhuman. Yeah. I really want to enjoy my days on earth being authentically me and yes. authentically human so if i have to feel something i will feel something if mm -hmm. i have to cry i cry if i have to shout i want to be expressive i am tired of, of being put in a box put in a box you know downplaying my emotions mm. downplaying my feelings you know when i stuff up emotions i fall sick and it happens to anybody you can ask your doctors mm -hmm. when you suppress anger it affects different parts of your body, liver, yeah. kidney. <laughs> so, yes. I'm just mm -hmm. tired of being strong. I know that mm -hmm. everybody wants to be a strong black woman, independent woman. There's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a word mm -hmm. of who suffer past or who, can, who has the strongest threshold to pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just want to be vulnerable and live life, you know, without fear. 
and just being as humanly possible as I've been brought on earth to be. Yeah. Mm. I think that's why I started talking about mental health. And a lot of people talk to me and I'm mostly a healer for people's conversations. I do more listening and I realize that everybody's going through a lot. Mm-hmm. And then everybody outside is seen as, oh, you are enjoying your life. Enjoy your life. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. It's tiring. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't tell your boss, oh, I can't come in today. I don't know what happened to me. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed and I feel so sad. They'll say, are you okay? Come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but these things happen and I just feel like we should speak more about, about it. it. Mm-hmm. About mental health, you know, for men and women, especially Nigerian men, it's okay to be vulnerable. Is it? <laughs> is it? It's very okay to it's be vulnerable. It's okay to be vulnerable, Pascal. It's is okay. It? It's you okay. don't want to because I don't think guys in the twenties and thirties, everybody's forming bad guy. You're mm. being gangster. You're doing this in your forties. High blood pressure, mm. diabetes. No, but, but we have the <laughs> most cases of men having high blood pressure now. in their youths now. In their youths, okay. You're, in their youths now. Okay, so it's so tiring. I it's, thought it was a thing, a sickness for old mm-hmm. people, but now no. it's, it's now for the younger generation. Yeah, so the pressure is actually too much now. Coupled with the fact that we just said now, majority of people who leave their lives on social media is a mirage. That's promoting yeah. what you said now. It's pieces. You understand? So this also fosters a push in work or push in goal, a push in purpose. Yeah. Whereby when someone's supposed to make money at the age of 30, he wants to make it at 18. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it puts a lot of pressure on the heart. Well, and you the can't mind. cheat life. That's what I'm mm-hmm. telling you. I'm telling you. I know the, because yeah, I exactly, tried. Exactly. You understand <laughs> what I'm trying to say? So, and men not talking about their pain. I will say this, you can't cheat life. I've tried my 20s saw entertainment. I'm currently in my 30s, right? Mm. And there's a time in my life that I was moving on the fastest lane, like I was on speed. But I didn't have direction, right? So I had to take a step back, right? And then start looking for the right direction. Because you can be on speed and miss your way. But when you're being directed properly, you navigate. There'll be pauses. There'll be... Mm -hmm. Times for breaks. Yeah, there'll be potholes. But it's okay. You can't cheat life. Even if you want to cheat life, you can't cheat the person's experience in life Mm -hmm. that has built the person to that you know to that stage you cannot cheat it even now i know there are some things i really want Mm -hmm. and it happens to the best of us there's so many things that (laughs) we're like ah at my age i don't buy like four properties but then you can't cheat the experience on managing the four properties oh my god (laughs) You can do it in in your 20s, like at 22, you have like three big houses because of how life treated you and then you have to, but how can you sustain, do you have the experience to manage it? To manage it. That's true. You don't. So you can't cheat life. Mm-hmm. You know, small, 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 small. I can't believe I'm the one teaching people patience, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's just little by little. You know, mm-hmm. you need cut soup, small, small, before you mm-hmm. burn your throat. Yeah, exactly. that's really yeah exactly. And that's also a, a very interesting yeah. perspective. If yeah. things don't get better in your own time, mm-hmm. it will in God's time. Some of us keep chasing our shadows, <sighs> and we want things to happen now, no. but mm-hmm. we forget that God has a plan for yeah. everyone. So let's talk about challenges that you have faced in the movie industry. What would you say have been, you know, what have been those challenges? Hmm. This is your exhale, exhaling. Because we've heard, like, you know, sometimes that. we hear there's like favoritism, there's like, you know, animosity towards like the women in acting. Like, guys are like, oh, why are you guys. And point and new kill. car, new car, uh, this point and kill. Packing. You know, there's just so yeah. many things. So, what would you say has been your experience? I'm very aware, but also very oblivious. Mm. And, mm. and so many things don't get to me or they pass over me mm-hmm. because I just do. I'm here for my craft. I'm here for the art. Every other thing is just secondary. Mm. You know, the cars, the house, the glitz, the glam. It's just the aftermath of the art. If the art is done well, then you can execute that one even more perfectly. I don't think I've really faced any challenges in the acting industry. I mean, being stereotyped, I understood why, mm-hmm. because we're not many of me. I'm one of a kind, so I understood why they stereotyped me. What stereotype? Like, oh, making me be the sexy girl, or be the girlfriend, or be, okay. be the beautiful the girlfriend, girl. or yeah. But I understood. I totally got it in my head. I said, okay, not one too many. Mm-hmm. There's only one Bev, you mm-hmm. know. So yeah, now it's now my job to walk 
towards not being stereotyped. So every challenge I've faced is self-inflicted. I don't think it, it was from people's pressure. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. pressured by people. <laughs> well, people are pressured by you. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm not pressured by people and I know that I can speak for myself because people say, oh, Bev, it's not everybody that is like you. Mm -hmm. I don't have any envious bone. Because Maybe because I grew up with boys and I was the only girl, so I've always just known that it's me and me. Like, it's only me I look at. But I don't have an envious bone. I don't have a jealousy bone. I just stay knowing more about, oh, this person is envious of you, and I stay entering the real world and making friends. Every challenge I've faced in my career has been self-inflicted because I always strive to do better or do more. Mm -hmm. For them complaining that actresses are the ones making it, come on. They feel like... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, the population of women are more than men. Than sense. men, so far women strive and work hard. It's only normal that people receive gifts. Yeah, women were vulnerable, were soft. Mm -hmm. You get a gift, you want to show it off. Mm -hmm. Men are not like that. So yeah, so even if they may be getting gifts, even if they may be, just because I know a lot of guys that a lot of actors mm -hmm. that get a lot of gifts, mm -hmm. right? And That's you know how the stereotype actresses are saying, oh, you're a gold digger, oh, she's a gold digger, she's a gold digger, that. You need to see men near other rich men. You Say need to, less. You need to see men near other rich men. Like Say less. You think ladies are gold digging? Hmm. Be in the midst of normal men with a group of billionaires. <laughs> they say ladies are gold mm -hmm. diggers, but men are ass kissers. Yeah, lick herself. Yeah. <laughs> we lick it so I'm not saying that we should not network, we should not socialize. Mm -hmm. Men, they do our service, die. Pass, yeah? mm -hmm. pass anything, then, you know. Women, we find favors. That's really interesting. Uh, so talking about Olotere, yes. the recent one, uh, that's the series that was put out on Netflix. You guys shot it in Mauritania. Yes. Yeah. How did you get there? <sighs> 18 hours layover, two days journey. We shall wow. go there. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because it's the, the shot in the deserts of Mauritania. Yeah. Uh, first things first, what was your thoughts when you heard you guys were shooting this project out of Nigeria? I was super excited. Oh, yes. Right. I was so happy. Yes. Why? Because it's going to be raw. It's going to be authentic. We're not going through corners. It's not your average Nigerian movie that we're collecting space, navigating space. I was like, yes, this okay, is some, so exactly, this is some real life Production. scene. Like, yeah. yes, I'm so excited. Like, mm -hmm. there's a video of Sharon and I, where we got the news, we've not spoken to each other about it. So we met at uh, the premiere of the Sunday Affair. Mm -hmm. And we had unspoken words of excitement. Like, oh my God, you got the news, yes. Oh my God. It was something I was looking forward to, um, the highs and the lows. I literally wanted to experience everything. Mm -hmm. I'm happy I've experienced it. Mm -hmm. I'm happy I'll still experience more. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm happy that people love the movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. That means we did something great. Yeah. And my tears and hard work did not go to waste. waste. To waste. So yeah, okay. I was so excited about it. Uh, that's that's, <laughs> that's good. I mean, being in the movie space, right, you've had to interact with so many people. Yeah. And some have become family, some have become friends. Yeah. Um, we've seen your friendship grow with Sharon. Yeah. Would you say um, Olotere like fortified that friendship that you both share? Yes. I'll put it out there. Like Sharon is like my ticket to heaven. Yes. Like Sharon is the person that's going to keep a seat for me in heaven yeah. and mm -hmm. say my friend is sitting down here. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. like my mediator to God. I just love authentic people. Mm -hmm. And I love people that are real as it comes. You know, we're all smoke and dust, kisses in the air. Yeah, Sharon is my friend. I have other friends in the industry that I love so much. I mean, I'm not really a social media person in the sense that you're not going to know my real friends from... From social media. You cannot know the people I hang out with from social media or anything. Because I'm, I'm a cheerleader for all. But I have my core people, mm. right? It has literally solidified the bond between Sharon and I. She's a sweetheart. I have other friends, Nancy, mm -hmm. um, Oprah. They, they, I have a lot. Of mm -hmm. friends, I would say. Copy that. I'm blessed to find really authentic people in my space, mm -hmm. and I'm grateful for that. Fantastic. Oh, you're really blessed. You're yeah. really, really blessed. blessed. Yeah. I'm talking about blessings. There's been a lot of wedding bells around you. 
and you've been so loud about it. You've told us of how you've created hashtags. Yes. For wedding. Three hashtags this year. Exactly. On. One more to go. One more to go. Exactly. <laughs> There's this saying that once wedding bells start to ring around you, it's yeah. either yours is around the corner it's coming. or, it's, or it's already there. I have all the love to give. Mm. You know, um, I'm not going to blow my trumpet and say I'm a good human being, but I do a lot of work, mm. internal work, to just be a perfect human being. Mm. Marriage, I can't see it for mm. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That Sometime in the future, I'll get married and I'll have kids. But for now, my own vision, I can't see it. Maybe you're still tired of certain things that are holding you back? Nothing is holding me back. I'm a woman. I'm not going to propose to myself. Okay. So, are you in a relationship? No, I'm in a relationship with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, power. He he loves Jesus. Yeah. Exactly. Kim, do you have somebody for me? Ah, my sister. <laughs> This one, you are with Christ. I'm Who with else you. do you need? I swear! He's I'm the only one. I'm holding the garment of God ah. so tightly. Please mm. hold it. He's the one that can never disappoint me. Yeah. Curious. So, oh. yeah, but I know that any man that bags me has bagged something really great. So, mm. um, dear future husband, wherever you are, mm -hmm. your blessing is waiting for you. Yes! <laughs> so I love it, I love it, I love it. So, talk to us about um, any upcoming projects. projects. Do you have anything dropping soon? I have a lot exciting. dropping actually. But the time is not based on my own timing. It's based on the producers or the directors. Yes. But I have two great movies that I'm so excited about. Mm. The working title, because it might change when the movie comes out. Mm -hmm. So the working title for What the Streets, mm -hmm. and then the working title for the other one is The Ghetto Love Story. Mm. That one produced by Basketball. Yes, yes. Ghetto Love Story. Both of them were beautiful projects. Mm. I'm so excited for it. I have all this project coming up, you know, more talks on mental health. That's what we're working on. Mm -hmm. So that you guys know that you guys are not alone. You're not mm -hmm. alone. No. Exactly. Like yeah. Expect more. Expect better from Beverly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always give every year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not stopping. Can't stop. Won't stop. You know, keep popping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, it's only going to get better. And all right. Yeah. Well, we look forward to, to all that you have projects? in store for us. Mm -hmm. It was so nice chatting with you. We're going to go on a quick break right now, guys. When we come back, Beverly, myself and Pascal will still be here. So stick around. Stick around. Welcome back. You're still watching Trending. We're about to play some more games with Beverly. Oh, more games. Yeah. Yes. You love games, huh? I'm just asking. This, um, the segment uh, of the show. Yeah. Trending. <laughs> okay. Kim, why are you guys looking at me? I'm so suspicious. Hey. <laughs> We're playing names of Nigerian movie producers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you the names of the movies and then you tell us the producers. Hell. Okay, let's go. House of Ga. Balale Austin Peters. Yes. Are you sure? Is that a final Ga? answer? Ga. It just came out. Yeah. Is that a final answer? Final answer. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Kunaka. Kunaka. The next one Amazing. is Kambili. Kayo de Kasu. Correct. <laughs> But you did, wow. you did, you you did, did very good. good. Yeah. You, you know, you know your, you know your craft. You know your, you know your onions. Yeah. Where's my present? I, I present to you, Pascal. Your present. <laughs> this one I'll throw <laughs> on Todd Miller Bridge into the river. Would you? <laughs> oh, Don't hurt Pascal's feelings. I can swim though. You can swim. One hundred percent. Do you want to learn? I want to learn. Copy that. You got your coach, Mama. Thank you very much. Let's go. <laughs> What? I'm so uncomfortable. What? Just, she told me that she was going to throw me into Third Milan Bridge. I, I told her I, I could swim. To talk to a guy, Beverly. I feel like I'll be so uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> why? Like, like, my body is doing me. Like, why? Why? <laughs> why? But do you understand? But it's okay. Hmm. I can swim. Yeah, no problem. And I'll ask the follow up question. Can you swim yourself? I can't swim. So you. you, you, you no problem. Thank you. I'll be worrying. Reese! This thing. So Pascal. I've never seen you reach like this in my entire life. You want my phone? This is giving, he's dropping it. No, 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 no. It's just natural. It's Ooh, organic. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Okay, interesting. Well, thank you so much for coming thank on the show, Beverly. Thank you so much. We wish you nothing but the best as you go forward. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, we Amen. hope Amen. to have you back here. Mm -hmm. Send us of your more, many more, more achievements and yeah. things that have happened in your life. Hopefully, wedding bells. The way you put it, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and, and with my craft, the older you get, with the experience you gather, the better you are at the craft. <laughs> mm. So, yeah. What's King's doing? <laughs> I'm just seeing. All right, guys. We've come to the end of this episode. <laughs> thank you so much for sticking with Pascal's long reads. <laughs> wow, it was an episode. We had an amazing time with Berkeley on set. Yes, we did. We did. We did. Thank you so us. much for joining us. Till we see you again next time. My name is Kim Opera. My name is Pascal. And I'm Beverly. <laughs> Don't forget to keep it moving. Keep it moving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.